Hi, in this video, we are going to talk about structs. Okay, so we are done with parallel arrays, which is what we have done so far. Now we are going to try and see how we can have records of data. Okay, so what does a record mean? So in this uh, week, we are going to talk about records or structs. What can we do with a struct? How do you manipulate data using struct? Again, this is a data modeling type, right? So we are going to see how to use data modeling for your song database or for my video database, how to use structs to model the same data. So let's take a look and see what's a struct first. How do we keep track of records of data? Record, this is one record, right? A student record, for example. It has the name of a student, it has GPA, it has grade, and it could have other data in your student record. Now, if you were to keep track of this, we would have parallel arrays as what we have done so far. This would need three parallel arrays. Likewise, for your song database, if I said have artist, name, you know, name of song, artist, time in minutes and seconds, then you'd have to have four parallel arrays, which is just a lot of work to have so many parallel arrays. What would be nice is to have a data type that would do the whole thing. This would become an object. This one object would have the person's name, GPA, and grade. This is one record, as we call it. So structs are used to essentially model these records of data, which is what we're going to see. Okay, so we are moving on from arrays. We still use arrays. You will see how we use arrays of objects. But for each object, we can have a whole component, a whole object. So the data type is called struct. As the syntax goes, struct, the name of the struct, all the different data members you want in there. So for a struct like this, I would have a C string, a student name. I would have a GPA, which is a double, and the grade, which is a char variable. So three different data members. So we define our own data members. So it's our own data type. This is a user-defined data type. Notice how the syntax goes. You have curly brackets to define your data members and a semicolon at the end, which is very important, semicolon. Without that, you get bad errors. So here is an example of a struct student data type. Struct, the name of the data type, I call it student type. Um, ideally, this should, be, this should be an uppercase because it's a data type. Then you put your data members in there. Char array, first name, last name of 31 characters each, GPA, which is a double, and a grade. And then we create a variable called PCC student of this data type. Okay, so PCC student is one object that will have first name, last name, GPA, and grade. So how do we now put information into this PCC student? The dot is called the member access operator. So as you know, we have four data members. PCC student has a first name, last name, GPA, and grade. So you do C in using the extraction operator. We can't read spaces, but you could do C in PCC student dot F name. Um, this is not good because we cannot do this for a C string, we would use the string copy function. So we're putting John into first name. You're putting Smith into last name, like that. Okay. And then, of course, GPA and grade can be assigned using the assignment operator. Because F name and L name are C strings, we have to use string copy. This is okay. You can use this or you can use cn dot get line pcc student dot first name which is what we'll be using because we want to be able to read with spaces and then 31 because 31 is the number of characters we defined for my char array right and likewise you can do the same for l name for last name okay uh, so these are all different ways to get input into that one student's data okay what else can we do with it Assignment operator can be used with a struct, meaning if I create a student called PCC student of that data type, student type, and if I create an LOHS student, 
I can say LOHS student is equal to PCC student. I can copy the contents of PCC student into this other struct here. We can use the assignment operator. Okay. Um, other than that, we cannot use any other operators. You have to essentially go one at a time. If you want to compare, this wouldn't work again because we have converted them to C strings. We would use a string compare of LOHS student first name, comma, um, PCC student first name is equal to zero. And PCC student, the same thing, string compare of LOHS student last name, comma, PCC student dot last name equals equals zero, zero. Then do something. That's what we are saying there. Okay. So we need to essentially go member wise comparison. We can say if LOH students is equal to PCC student, it doesn't work. The only thing that works for the whole object to object is the assignment operator. For all other operations, you must use dot, which is a member access operator, and access the individual data members and do what you need to with them. Okay? So output, the same thing. You cannot output a whole PCC student. It doesn't work. You have to output one at a time. PCC student dot first name, dot last name, dot grade, dot GPA. Member wise, that's called member wise. Okay, one member at a time. Okay. Now you can do further, you can do other things. You can have array instruct. So maybe the student has 10 scores, right? This every student may have 10 quiz scores or whatever it is. So you add that data member to your struct and say, well, the person, this this data type, student type is also going to have an array of 10 scores. That's an array instruct. Then when you create your PCC student, this PCC student is going to have first name, last name, GPA grade, and an array of 10 scores. This is part of the student's data type. And then if you want to put data in there, you would say PCC student dot scores, score bracket zero equals something. Or you could go through a for loop and read data in here. So watch where the subscript goes and the number goes. It's very important. The array is the scores, not PCC student, not yet. Okay. So there we go. You could go through a for loop and read data into that array of scores by saying PCC student dot scores of I. And it would read all the scores. It will go through 10 times and read the scores. Let's talk about constructors. What are they? How do we initialize these objects or these data members, I should say? So we create these data members. How do we initialize them? You cannot go here. And, and initialize this, okay? Doesn't like it. So we have what are called constructors. When an object is created, it helps to put values in them. For example, when I create this PCC student here, uh, a constructor initializes it with good values, okay? So that's a constructor is essentially an initializer. Special member functions, whenever a struct object is created, a constructor is called. So who creates these constructors? If you don't create it, the system provides a default constructor. If no constructor is provided by the user, the compiler will always declare a default constructor. The default constructor, unfortunately, doesn't initialize everything the way you want. It simply throws a constructor in with no arguments, and it's, it's just there, okay? It doesn't initialize. For example, it would not initialize um, my GPA and grade, my GPA to a good, where's my, um, wherever my data type is. Right here? Yeah. So it would not initialize GPA to zero. Depending on different compilers, you get random numbers in there. So it's always a good idea to create constructors when you create structs and classes. Okay, when we get to classes, we'll see that. But now we're talking about structs. So we can provide a default constructor. Default constructor in the struct data type looks like this. So in this struct data, type, I've moved on from student type. Now we have a car type. Okay, that's a struct called car type. I have the name of the car with 256 characters in it and an int model. These are my data members okay, for my car type. Here's my default constructor. So notice I said the constructor is a special member function. It has the same name as the struct. So it cannot have a different name, but it can have different parameters. The one with no parameters, nothing inside the parenthesis, is called a default constructor. So when I create an object like this, when I create a struct called a car, who gets called the default constructor. And here's the implementation for this default constructor. 
Notice the name of the struct, colon, colon. This is called the scope resolution operator to say that this constructor belongs to the struct. That's very important. You can't miss that. You have to have that. Okay. So once you put that in, what goes in the constructor is essentially initializing values. So we're going to say string copy. That will work. So we don't need this. String copy, some text. Okay. So I call it no name. You can call it I don't know, no title. This is name, so there's no name. That means it is an object that's created with no name and a model of zero. That's a default constructor, okay? So this is just something that I made up, right? There's nothing in it, that's what it is. Uh, and model number equals zero. And we can always overwrite it later with, if I create a car, a car gets created with these two values, then I can go put values in it later. But a constructor at least initializes it to something decent, okay? So that's a default constructor. So rules for the constructor, constructors have the same name as a class. It must have the same name as a class. It cannot have a different name. Constructors don't have return types. Notice there's no, this is like a function, but there's no return type. I don't say void, I don't say int. Cannot have a return type, okay? Constructors automatically call when the object is created. So when this object is created, because I didn't put parentheses and pass any parameters to it, it calls the default constructor. The default constructor would be this constructor. And the a car object gets created with no name for its name and model of zero. Okay, so those are all the rules. Different types of constructors can be created. We can have a default constructor, which is what we have. A parameterized constructor is a constructor that takes parameters, which we will see. Copy and move, we don't see yet. So here's a constructor with parameters. Constructor with parameters says the same name as the struct, nothing different, but it takes two parameters. One is the char array, which we will copy into this char array, and an integer, which we assign to this model. So anything that comes in here will get copied, and the object will create get created with this new name and this new model. We'll see how it's done. So here's the implementation for the parameterized constructor. The new name comes in as a char array. The new model comes in. String copy. New name gets copied into the name of the object that is being created. And the model gets assigned the value new model. So if a car is getting created and two parameters come in, a car will have name and model as its data members. So we copy from this parameter into name and from new model into model. Okay. So when I create an object called a car, the default constructor is called. A car will have no name and model of zero because that's what my default constructor here says. But if I create this other car called my car and send a name and model year to it, this my car gets created with a name called Buick and 77 as the model year. Okay. So depending on the constructor you have created and the object you create, the corresponding constructor gets called. No parameters. Default constructor gets called. Here is a, a struct that you create or a variable that you create with construct with with parameters. Then you must have those default cons the constructor with parameters. Otherwise, it'll give you an error message. So make sure if you're going to create an object like this, you actually have the constructor created for that, which is this. Okay. So here's the whole thing put together: structs and constructors. Here's the whole code. The car type construct um, with name and model, two constructors, a default constructor and a constructor with parameters. This is what we're going to be doing. And now the car type default constructor, constructor with parameters implemented. And here we go. We create in main. This is called a client code. These are all the objects, the user defined data type. This is the client that uses that struct. I create a car, I create my car. A car is a default constructor car. My car is a car that gets created with these two parameters. Print is a function that I have. Print car takes car type any car. So if I pass a car, that information gets copied into any car. And I can say any car dot name and any car dot model. I print it. So I can pass any car to the print function. And it prints it. The job of the print car function is to take a struct, an object of car type and print it. So you will pass a song to a print song function. It will take it and just print it. 
and in there you put in your print statements however you want okay so this is the client code part of it so overall what we do is instead of having multiple parallel arrays we can create one car object one song object one video object so you see how the data modeling changes modeling of the same object in different types okay so here's the car um, when you create a car this is what happens a car gets created with no name and zero because that's what's there in the default constructor my car gets created with Buick and 77 which is what I have passed here as parameters and print car a car if you call this function it comes here and calls this print function and prints it right nothing more than that okay um, now the last part this was all done with a single object a car is just one car my car is one car what if I wanted to create a whole array of cars like a car store right a dealership a whole array of videos a whole array of songs so same thing the struct does not change it's the same struct but when I create my object or my list of objects in main instead of creating one car called a car I would create a list of cars called car list of 20 so now car list is a list of 20 cars each car has a model and name name and model name and model right I could say car list of zero dot name equals something and it puts it in there likewise I could have a list of videos okay oh this was supposed to be the wrong one okay so the video type is the name of my struct I have a title and year I create a list of videos right and this should not say Toyota Corolla this should be for my other this uh, this got all mixed up here let's copy this and this should go here in this slide which is what it's supposed to have like that that would be name make it a little bigger you know what i mean okay so that's what that's supposed to do there okay so here this would be the name of a movie i don't know something like lion king what I can fit there okay all right so a, a, a list of videos or a list of cars as opposed to a single video or a single car which is what we have here okay so this is kind of where our project two is headed a list of videos a list of songs that you will be doing which you've done before but instead of using parallel arrays we are going to use a struct a struct created an array of structs that's what we're going to see